thank you for joining us today. My name is Joanne Mahastate. And I'm Robert Martin Bueller. And we are 2019 Nest Fellows. Alongside Matthew Sharples, we created a CU Boulder Species Field Guide. So we are observing wildlife around our CU Boulder campus and we're talking about the different ways that we observe and look at species as a scientist and an artist. It's gonna be fun. Join us. Perfect. Right now we're sketching our collected specimens. Joe has found a spruce cone and I have picked up a fallen cottonwood leaf. <laughs> I think it's good. The goal of field sketches is to really slow down your observation and consider the shape, structure, surface, and scale of what it is you are looking at. These observations can give us helpful insights into the way things grow and the adaptations they have undergone. From an arts perspective, it's always important to be looking at what you're drawing more than you're looking at the drawing itself. You always want to be drawing what you see and not what you think you see. Sketching is such a helpful tool in both arts ideation and scientific realization. In the case of the cottonwood leaf, I would start by considering the overall form, curvatures, and shapes, and then move on to specific indicators and features like the number of teeth on the leaf's edge. These features help us track similarities and differences among specimens. As you are trying to pay attention to particular characteristics, use all of our senses. So even if your drawing doesn't look very pretty, like mine, it's totally okay. Yep, we're, we're thinking about each This is a blue spruce. They have a pyramidal shape. This one is pretty iconic because of his blue needles. The needles can be very sharp. They grow individually in a spiral formation, not in clusters like you see in pines. The branches grow horizontally and are upturned, splaying out like a hand. There are many species of cherries on campus, from the Prunus genus. To identify them, you can look at some of these characteristics. In spring, look for their beautiful clustered flowers. And in summer, when they're fruiting, you will notice cherries. Ornamental cherries, however, do not produce fruits, so pay attention to some of the other characteristics. Their leaves are thudged and most cherries have their leaves arranged alternately. The cottonwood tree has a soothing sound as the wind blows. They are named cottonwood because their seeds are released attached to a cotton-like strand they are dispersed aerially. Their leaves are triangular and coarsely toothed. Mallard ducks are believed to be one of the most abundant species of ducks worldwide, being found in different freshwater habitats. Male and female are quite different. Females, like this one, are brown, while males have green heads. It's that bird. Oh, do you see that hawk on the ground? On the other side of the building? I do. Holy moly. Red-tailed hawks are often seen soaring up in the sky. But here, the hawk is drying their feathers after fishing at Varsity Pond. Red-tails are raptorial birds. Painted turtles spend long periods of time basking under the sun because as reptiles they regulate their temperature externally from their environment. They are highly adapted with complex body structures, including web feet to aid their swimming and a shell that is believed to be an adaptation for burrowing. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed learning about things to look for as you're trying to identify different species. We hope you share your sketches with us using the CU Field Guide hashtag. And remember to follow the link down here. So you can 
download the entire field guide to help you in your adventures. Thank you. Bye. Wow. Wow. Wow.